Hello everyone, welcome to Play by Play, a series that will focus on shining a light on decision making, positioning and general game feel for Battlefield 5. I'll be commentating a random game from my gaming sessions during the edit stage to give some insight on my decision making process during the game, why I choose to go to certain areas, why I shoot certain people but don't fire on others, etc. I hope that I'll be able to do one to two play by play episodes a week depending on if you guys like this style of content. Please let me know in the comments down below how you feel about the whole thing. Also, I haven't forgotten about the Lewis Gun Guide, that one is still coming, but I need some additional time to finish up all the editing on it. So without further introductions, let's get right into it. Today's gameplay is from the map Aras on a breakthrough only server, and we are playing on the defending side. I was using the Lewis Gun in this particular game. As we are defending, I primarily try to build up some defenses at the start of the game. This will allow us to defend the areas a little bit more easily, as they will give us some cover that the enemy will not be able to use. As you can see, this didn't really work out for me. Once under fire, I immediately try to duck and sprint into the next area with heavy cover. I also make sure to only use my healing kit once I have actually managed to get into cover and I'm out of the line of fire from the enemy, so my healing does not get interrupted if I catch a random stray bullet. After taking the second round of bullets, I actually decide to go onto the point of B to get a different perspective and potentially flank enemies that are coming towards our side. I always try to make sure that I have some form of cover that I can immediately duck or prone behind in case I get shot. Since we only had one target, there was not a huge amount of decision making to be done here. Just shoot the first guy you see, and then duck behind cover again. We keep in mind that there is a tank in the distance for future reference. At the same time, I realize that there is nothing to be gained on the right side. So I move back towards the more heavily contested side, flanking a random person behind that tank. As I do not see a huge amount of enemies coming towards me, I decide to reinforce this position that we're trying to hold. I'll crawl along the floor here and basically just reinforce the entire area, just so we have a little bit of uh, cover from the snipers. While they don't really do anything for their own team, they are still quite annoying and we should at least have a little bit of cover from them. Note that during this entire time I'm keeping a keen eye on the minimap, just to make sure that no one suddenly sneaks up on me that my teammates might have spotted for me. I also make a mental note for these two dead guys that we just passed, in case they come back to the same spot that they were killed in. A lot of people do this, so keep that in mind while you're playing the game. If you kill someone, it is very likely that they might return to the same position. After taking care of the small defenses downstairs, I go up to the road and actually try to build up the big defenses so our recons can actually take advantage of that and take out the enemy snipers. Of course, again, I always keep an eye on the mini. And I was ready to take out that person, but my team already took care of it. So everything's fine. As I continue to build this up, I'm always hoping that some of my teammates would actually come over and help me to accelerate this process. Unfortunately, this doesn't happen, which makes this entire process take quite a lot of time. One could argue it was not entirely worthwhile either, as you will see later down the line. Nevertheless, I would always recommend trying to fortify some locations that you're trying to defend. The fortifications actually do help quite a lot, they're not just a gimmick. Obviously, if you're fighting against a team that has a bunch of assaults, this might not always be the best choice, as the assaults can easily destroy your fortifications. Which is exactly what happens in just a second. What I do is I immediately run to prone, and then use my healing kit once I am in a safe spot. At this point, I realize that someone is marked on my minimap just in front of me. So when I get up, I immediately shoot to the location where I thought the enemy would be. But I later realized, as you can see, that he was actually lying down in the ditch, netting me an easy kill. Always keep an eye on the minimap and don't forget to zoom out. You can do that by pressing the N button on your keyboard, unless you have rebounded. At that point, I don't know. At this point, I pretty much get shot in the back because this whole ordeal took a little bit too much time because no one in my team decided to help me. I should have stopped building this up way earlier as I realized that A had already been taken. With nowhere else to really spawn but B, that's a pretty easy decision to make. We choose to go to B and try to, as fast as possible, get back to the actual point to help the countercap. As we spawn quite far away and not actually on the point, we have a good overview of the whole battlefield and we can shoot some people that are trying to get into the B point. And again, when taking damage, I always try to sprint away from the damage and try to prone as sprinting into a prone will cause your character to basically leap forward, making it harder for the enemy to hit you. After healing up, I quickly retreated, resupplied this assault, and then went back into the fight from a different angle. You never want to come from the same angle twice in a row. 
I didn't realize how many recons there were, so I got sniped. When I got done, I usually tried to give my medics as much time as possible to make a play and come and get me. You wouldn't believe how many times a medic has actually made a miracle play and got me just a second before the time ran out. Don't just give up, people. Next up, I tried to spawn a squad mate here over on A. After loading in, I make sure that no one's around me, and then I run into the next hard cover, with a good overview or flanking position over the battlefield that I can find. At this point, since we are in an elevated position that will give us a lot of cover in case we get shot, I just start to shoot whatever I can see. Remember that with all the LMGs and MGs for the support class, you can always just bang through smoke. I also make sure to always change my position and not always shoot from the same exact spot, as that would make you easy bait for recons. As the tank rolls by, you realize as a support you can't really do much, so instead I go for the infantry behind the tank. This is around the time where I realized that I actually have the wrong item equipped. I didn't want to have the anti-tank mines, I wanted the AT grenade pistol, but you know. So instead of helping out with the tank, I go back to hunting infantry and get promptly shot in the face. This time around I actually decide to skip the death animation because I do not see any medics around or any of my squad mates in the area. Then I decide to respawn at the actual defensive headquarters, as that will put me closer to the area that I was in before than the actual A spawn might do. So spawning in, I try to go as fast as possible to the point where I was at before. There's a little bit of parkouring issues here, but we get over it one day. I also make sure to always give out the command to defend. If you were a squad leader, always give out defend commands unless the actual attacking point is just about to be taken, as that will give you about 200 points every 90 seconds or so. I continue to just shoot the infantry that is running in because I don't really have anything else to do. A is not really in particular peril, as well as B being already taken by the enemy, I can't really retake it by myself. As such, we focus on defense for now. Killing all the infantry trying to run into A is a very effective way of actually getting the enemy to not get into A, who would have thought? We try to shoot enemies all across the map, as the Lewis gun is able to do so with its incredibly high ammo count. Just holding down left click and aiming in the general direction of the enemy will usually result in a few kills. You will see me open the scoreboard in this gameplay quite often. The reason for that is simple. I want to know how good my teammates are doing and how well my enemy is doing. That way I can get an easy glance as to how the battle in general is going and if there are areas that need to be reinforced. As we continue to shoot more and more people and more and more people show up here from our team, we'll start to garner quite some attention from the enemy. Reviving my teammate here is not difficult of a decision as we have very good cover from the right side and in front of us is another piece of the wall. As a general rule of thumb, always try to kill whoever killed your teammate first before you revive them, otherwise you will just give over an easy double kill for the enemy. Remember that the best way to dodge bullets is to just sprint and prone. Keep remembering that. This reviver is also quite the easy choice, there is no one around. You'll see me move over to objective A to get an actual look at the objective, to see if there are any enemies on the actual point, and to give another defensive order to A. We need those 200 points. As I didn't really see anyone on the actual point, I go back to my previous position, to try and shoot one or two more infantry trying to run into A. At this point I realize that A has actually been lost. Since I can't see anyone from my position, I'm not gonna just run straight in there, as that would be easy suicide. It is a safe choice that you can make, as Objective B has already been retaken by our team. As a support, a large part of your actual mission in the game is to also resupply all the people around you. So don't be afraid to just run around and resupply everyone, you're still helping the team a great deal. Sometimes even more than actually shooting people in the face. Mentally mark this tank in your head, so you know not to go there in case A needs to be retaken. After checking with the minimap on how many people were on A or trying to retake A, I decide to go over to B as B is a little bit understaffed. Ammo. 
I always try to make sure to have some kind of cover next to me, so I can dive into cover in case I get shot. Also, always try to see if there's any fortifications you might be able to build that might help you out in the future. Right here, I make a mistake by running into the open and trying to 1v1 an assault without a superior position. Sometimes this goes well, but most of the time the assault should win the 1v1. Again, I try to give my teammates as much time as possible if there are any nearby. I don't see any, so I just decide to respawn. I go back to the overview map to see what is going on, and then respawn at B just in case anyone tries to attack it. Unfortunately, in this particular firefight, I spend too much time checking the one target and not really focusing on the one right in front of me. I should have killed the guy that is closer to me first, as that is the more dangerous opponent. Luckily for me, there is two medics around, so I give them as much time as possible so they can come and revive me, which is exactly what happens. Then I slide like half across the map, because that seems to be a common occurrence in Battlefield 5 right now. I always try to stay mobile on the point, so I run out and run into an enemy that is an easy kill for me. Then, during the reload, I go into a hard cover, just to make sure that I don't get shot, of course. When you see a person like that, just kill him. They deserve it. Just as a general note, don't stand at an actual MG that was made by your enemies right next to the enemy's point when there's about 20 people on that point. It's not a great idea. As I see the tank come in, I try to find a good position to place my AT mines that I still have equipped because I forgot to unequip them. I just drop them right here and then the game ends. It was a very quick game because we actually did everything right on the defensive team. The attacking team didn't quite coordinate properly to get into both points at the same time or sweep from the B site to the A site properly. As we were defending from an elevated position, we were able to kill about 20 people that were trying to get into A from B, greatly reducing their speed at which they could change positions. So despite not spending a lot of time on the actual points, we were able to make a big difference in the game. That said, a big part of this victory was also our team, because they actually took back B while we defended A. That will not always be the case in your games. You will not always find a team that knows exactly what they should be doing in an offensive situation. In those situations, you need to be the one to lead the charge into B to recapture it from the enemy. As a general tip on Aris, what you want to do as a support is go to the far edges to the left and right of the map depending on what you are trying to defend. If it's A, go to the left side of the map. If it's B, go to the very right side of the map and try to flank the enemies as much as you can. As a support, especially with the Lewis gun, you have a huge amount of ammo which will guarantee you at least a few kills even by just spraying into the open field. Flanking is often a better idea, especially for supports than most other classes in the game due to our huge amount of ammo capacity. As long as we don't get shot back, we are entirely self-sufficient for pretty much the entirety of the game. So don't be afraid to just go out by yourself and lone wolf a little bit on the left and right sides. Just make sure to always get back to the point when it actually needs bodies on the point itself to counter a cap. With those last few tips, I hope you guys enjoyed the very first episode of Play by Play. Please let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed this series and if you guys want to see more of it. As well as letting me know if there is anything I might have missed to talk about and if there's anything you guys want me to talk about specifically. Lastly, if there is any particular weapon and map or game mode combination that you guys want to see in the next play-by-play, -play, let me know in the comments down below as well. As per usual, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like or dislike button, and check me out over on twitch.tv slash LunaWolf. You can find a link to my stream down below in the description as well. With that, thanks for watching, and keep dropping those ammo pouches.